The third of the Ten Commandments signifies the importance that God places upon His name. His many names throughout the Word of God are a reflection on who He is and His relationship to mankind. Through His name, God reveals the essence of His character and His greatness. Some of the most common names for God in the Bible would include in the Old Testament, Jehovah or Yahweh. That is the covenant name of God that He gives to Israel. El Shaddai would be translated Lord God Almighty. Elohim is the plural form of God from where we would get in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth signifying the, the doctrine of the Trinity of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit through His very name itself, Elohim, which is translated God. And oftentimes when you see Lord, that is a translation from the Hebrew word Adonai. In the New Testament, probably the most familiar name is Jesus, Yehoshua, or Jehovah saves. And in the Greek transliteration, it would be Yeshua, which basically means salvation. So the name of Jesus means salvation. And then oftentimes we will see Christ, the Christos, the Messiah, the anointed one. So Jesus declares that he is the Christ, and he's the only one. There's not going to be another one. So don't go, well, I'm waiting for a better deal to come along. He is the one. He is the Messiah. He is the promised one from the Garden of Eden where God said one's coming to crush the head of the serpent. He is the promised one of God. Throughout the Bible, there's an excess of over 300 names that are attributed to God. Some of those that we're familiar with are the Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega, the author and finisher of our faith, the bread of life, the chief shepherd, Christ, deliverer, Emmanuel, God with us, faithful and true witness, the gate, the good shepherd, the holy and righteous one, the holy one of Israel, the horn of salvation, I am, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the lamb of God, the light of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, yet he was a man of sorrow. He is our master, the mediator between sinful man and holy God, prince of peace, resurrection in the life, the Savior, the Son of Man, the Son of David, the Son of the Most High. Jesus said He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Word. The name of God is extremely important. Uh, when anointing the new temple uh, that Solomon had built in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, in chapter 6, Solomon prays this great, great prayer, and he says, listen, God, if our crops ever fail and the enemy comes in and we pray to you and repent, will you hear from us? Will we hear from you? Will you heal our land? And he goes through several different scenarios, and then God gives the reply in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And God replies, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from the wicked way. So in other words, God goes, listen, at this house of God, I'm going to put my name there. I'm going to put my name on the temple. Jesus said his name would be in the city of Jerusalem. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, where there are two or three gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. That's why we recognize the unseen presence of God here, because we've gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. John 14, 13, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. Because it's through Jesus that we have access into the very throne room of God himself. So we want to honor the name of God. Now, as we've looked at with all of these commandments, first of all, we look at the prohibition that God gives us, okay? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So the literal translation for this commandment is, do not raise up Jehovah's name for no good. This brings three thoughts to my mind. First of all, don't take God's name in vain. 
by invoking his name while cursing or in anger or with empty words. To just frivolously throw around the precious name of Jesus when surprised or anxious or angry is to belittle this precious name or to be entertained by people that would also use God's name in vain. I think that's a great place for an amen. I think it's time Christians stand up and say, I'm not going to listen to that anymore. I'm not going to listen to a movie that slurs my God's name or uses his name in vain. I'm not going to watch it on TV. Because if you're entertained by it, you might as well be doing it yourself. Acts chapter 4 verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Do you understand what this name means? That that, that this is the name through which we have salvation, Jesus Christ. Some would say, well, I didn't mean it. Then don't say it. Because Jesus said we will be held accountable for every word that comes out of our mouth, whether you mean it or not. So don't just sling around the name of God or the name of Christ, either in using it or through euphemisms or any other form that might be out there because God is greatly offended by his name being tossed around like a rag doll. And listen to this, you get this well, because in this particular commandment, he says, I will not let this slide. You will not get away with this trespass. You better watch what comes out of your mouth. And if you're slinging around the word Jesus, when you get surprised or you're slinging the words of God or or, or, or anything that refers unto God, you better be real careful because he says specifically, I'm not letting this one slide. Amen. A second thought, we should not devalue the names of God. To take in vain means to consider his name worthless, that you don't care anything about it. Many of you can't name over five of his names in the Bible. There are over 300 of them. You ought to know them. You ought to value that. That ought to be something that you research and look at, that when you come across a name as you're reading through the Bible, you highlight and you go, listen, every name that God bears is a blessing that he shares. This is interesting. I want to know more about the names of my God. Before the days of the printing press, all books or written material had to be copied by hand. So if you got a book, somebody had written out that book and copied it from the original For the Old Testament, the scribes whose ministry was called to recopy the books of the Bible, they were called the Sopharim, S-O-P-H-E-R-I-M, the Sopharim. It was their occupation. It was their job to take a page of the Bible and to recopy that by hand meticulously, making absolutely sure that every single letter, every single word was copied exactly as they had it on the page. When they finished a page, all the letters, all the punctuation marks, everything on that page was counted to make sure it was the same exact count as the page that they had copied. Before starting to work, and these are some of the strict rules that they uh, would adhere to, Before starting to work, they were required to bathe and to put on proper Jewish dress. In other words, they they wouldn't just get started in their pajamas. They had to be in proper Jewish dress, bathed and cleaned up, before they were allowed to transcribe one word from this page onto another page. The parchment they used could only come from clean animals, and the quills that they would use for pens from the feathers of biblically clean birds. No word or letter could be written from memory. A scroll of the, of the text had to be opened before them, and each word would be carefully pronounced out loud before copying it. So before they would copy God, they would say God, and they would copy it. But understand this, before writing the name of God, the, the scribe would get up, they would wash themselves, They would wash their hands seven times, and then before they began writing, they would wipe off the pen from the ink, uh, any other word they'd written, and they would say out loud, I am writing the name of God for the holiness of his name. Every single time they would come to the word God, they would do that. Get up, wash themselves, wash their hands seven times, wipe off their pen, And pronounce out loud, I am writing the name of God for the holiness of his 
name. If a page of text from the Bible was incorrect or had any mistakes, they had 30 days to correct it. If they didn't correct it in 30 days, then that page was to be ceremonially buried because you could not destroy the Word of God, so they would very carefully bury it. The name of God meant something to them. It'll mean something to us. The name of God should never be attached to a false religion or to wolves in sheep's clothing, those charlatans. The name of God should not be invoked in swearing or a false oath. In other words, what Scripture will teach is that if you put your hand on the Bible and say, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God, you better tell the truth. Because it's not the judge you got to worry about charging with perjury. You got another judge up there that said, I will not let this slide. The third thought is that as a Christian, I can bring shame on the name of God by my behavior. You see, when I became a Christian, I became a child of God. I'm identified with the family of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why we call each other brothers and sisters, because we're a member of the family of God. We've been accepted in the beloved. We've been adopted into the family of God. We've been engrafted into the family so that we are members of the same family if we've been born again. Woo! I'm your brother, whether you like it or not. When's the family reunion? What are we having for dinner? In Leviticus chapter 20, God tells Moses that when you get into the promised land, and if someone decides to begin to worship and to take on the gods of the Canaanites and begin to worship that old wicked idol Molech, we talked about Molech, how they would sacrifice their children to Molech. Listen to what the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 20. He shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and I will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. God says when you do something wicked, it's a reflection on my holy name. When King David had committed adultery with Bathsheba, this is what Nathan the preacher told David after he confronted him. He said, thou art the man. You're the one that did it. You committed adultery. He says, now God's going to forgive you because you've confessed. He said, how be it, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme God. When you do things that, that, that are anti-Christ, that are, that are against the word of God, don't you understand you give the enemies of God great occasion to blaspheme his holy name. It affects him. It's a reflection on him. I was given this by my sister a long time ago. It, it's titled Your Family Name. You got it from your father. It was all he had to give. So it's yours to use and cherish for as long as you may live. If you lost the watch he gave you, you can always be replaced, but a black mark on your name can never be erased. It was clean the day you took it and a worthy name to bear. When he got it from his father, there was no dishonor there. So make sure you guard it wisely after all is said and done. You'll be glad the name is spotless when you give it to your son. It would really bother me if you took the name Deville, and you started slinging it around and surrounding it with a bunch of curse words. That would bother me. I might pray about it and consider giving you a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> it would really bother me if one of my sons committed a foul deed and my name was splashed across the headlines, a Deville's in jail for having done something wicked. Because that would be a reflection on me. Having preached 5,000 sermons, People will go, but didn't his son get put in a jail for that? And that's how they'd remember the name DeVille. How much more should we be protective of the precious name of God, knowing that our behavior is a reflection on him? If my people who are called by my name, that bear my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. But we are called by the name of God. And our behavior can certainly sling mud on his holy name. 
So we've talked about the prohibition. We, we know, and, and I doubt there's anybody in here that just throws around cuss words all the time. We, we all don't, none of us do that, amen? I guess I preach to myself as much as I preach to y'all. We just need to be careful. We need to be careful what we watch on the television. We need to be careful what we're willing to listen to and every now and then stand up and say, listen, I don't want you talking about my Lord like that. My Jesus died on the cross for me. I don't want you using his name in vain or emptily or throwing it around. And we just need to be careful. So that's a prohibition. But at the same time, when we looked at the commandments and it says don't do something, it always gives the implication, though, that we should be doing something. So we're going to go proactive. And the proactive part of not taking God's name in vain is that we bless the name of God. Amen? That we lift up and honor the holy, wonderful name of God. In the Lord's Prayer, the disciples came to Jesus and, and said, would you teach us to pray? They said, we pray, but we don't pray like you pray. Would you teach us how to pray like you pray? And Jesus said, all right, I'll be glad to. When you pray, pray like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He starts off by saying, as we pray, we should lift up the wonderful name of God. Hallowed, to be honored, to be reverenced is your holy, wonderful name, O God. Now in the Lord's Prayer, the, but the Bible says, and in the New Living Translation, may your name be kept holy. We're to praise his name in song. In Psalm, in, in Psalm 66, verse 1, the Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto, the, unto God, all you lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his gl praise glorious. Psalm 96, 2, Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Psalm 135, 2, you stand, Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of God, Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. That's what you were doing this morning. When you were lifting up the name of Jesus, saying, Jesus, Jesus, what a great name. That's what you were doing. You were obeying Psalm 135. The Bible says that in Revelation 13, that the Antichrist is coming, and you will know him because he will blaspheme the name of God. But I hope we won't even hear him speak because we're so loud blessing the name of God that the blasphemy doesn't even come through. Psalm 103, 1, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. In other words, we aren't just to bless him with that spiritual lockjaw of, thank you, Lord. Do it with some gusto, guys. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his soul. You need to have a stump in the backyard that you go out there and climb on and you throw your arms toward heaven and say, Oh, God, you're a good God. Oh, God, you're all powerful. God, you're all wise. You're all knowing. You know everything, God. And you are worthy of my praise. You're worthy of my adoration. And I don't care if the whole world knows it. Do it with some gusto once in a while. You do that at football games, don't you? Scream like a wild banshee. Psalm 34, David writes, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise will continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Wow, what a great, great psalm. Do you realize that every name that God bears is a blessing that he shares? That when you begin to look in the Old Testament during great events, that oftentimes God will either give himself or, or share with those people a new name or great saints of old will give him a name. Jehovah Yeri, J-I-R-E-H, J-I-R-E-H. It's pronounced Yeri. Jehovah Yeri was pronounced to Moses when God provided for them. And what it means is our God provides. What a great name. Because he does, doesn't he? Come on now, I've seen the parking lot. I know what y'all drove to church in. I've seen the houses you drove from to the church. I know you're going to go home and you've got a nice refrigerator that's full of good food. Because God's provided for you. Our God provides. 
And his name bear Jehovah Yeri. Wow. Jehovah Shalom. Our God is our peace. Jesus promises to give us a peace that passes all understanding. He is the Prince of Peace by his very name. And the Bible says that while there's chaos round about us, we can have peace in our heart because we know God. Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. By his very name, he is the God who heals, that heals our body, heals our mind, heals our soul. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my victory. It is under his banner that I will march. Jehovah Shabbat, the Lord, the host of heaven. I love that one. Isn't it good? Jehovah Shabbat, the commander of all the angelic armies of heaven. Boom! Jehovah Shema, the God who is there. Oh, I was having. Well, God was there. He was with you in the doctor's office. He was with you when you took your test. He's the God that's there. And his name says, I am there. Jehovah Shammai. But the greatest name of all is Jesus. Yeshua. Salvation. Deliverer. That's his name. His name is called salvation. The angel proclaimed to Mary, you shall name him Jesus because he's your salvation. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven by which man must be saved in the precious name of Jesus. And listen to me, you listen to me carefully. One day, whether you like it or not, every tongue that's ever uttered a sound, every descendant of Adam's race, every angelic being, whether rebellious or obedient, whether good or bad, will one day bow their knee and will confess that Jesus is Lord and they will profess his holy name. Like it or not. Listen to Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, of things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want to tell you something. I want to be practiced up, amen? I don't want the first time I bow my knee and confess the name of Jesus to be up in heaven. Oh, no, no. I'm going to get me a lot of practice down here on this earth. I remember hearing a story. I hadn't told the story yet, Dan. I remember hearing a story about a little girl that had a friend over on a Saturday night before uh, they, she was going to ask her to come to church with her the next day. Her daddy was a pastor. And, and kind of late at night, they said, hey, let's go to the kitchen and get us a snack. So they had to walk through the study. And in the study, the, the father was prostrate on his face praying. And, and the little girl just stepped over him. So the friend stepped over him. They got their snack. They went back through the study, stepped back over him. And the little girl stepped over him. They got to the room and, and the little friend said, What's wrong with your daddy? Something wrong with him? She goes, oh, he's like that every Saturday night. He's laid out getting prepared to worship God for the... He's like that every Saturday night. It's not unusual to see my daddy knelt down. We kneel down and pray and bless the name of God. Is that what your children can say about you? It's not unusual to see him prostrate before his God. To kneel down and bless the name of God. That's not unusual in our house. Or would that be the exception rather than the rule in your house? 1970, after the death of their grandparents and the birth of some of their children and feeling a little bit overwhelmed, as you oftentimes do, Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote this wonderful song that brought such great comfort to their hearts. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after a rain. Jesus, 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 let heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about that name. Do you know my Jesus? Do you know him as the God who provides? That every good and perfect gift comes from above? Do you know him as the God who can heal? 
Do you know him as the God of peace? Do you know him as the God who is there no matter where you are? He is there. Do you know the God who is the commander of the host of heaven? Do you know our advocate with the Father? Do you know the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Do you know my Jesus? Because I'm telling you something. It will transform your worship experience. It will change you when you have a personal, walking, talking relationship with Jesus. I'm going to ask you to bow.